In this video, I'm going to show you a simple and effective strategy for finding winning products to dropship on Shopify. And I'm also going to cover how to transition your product into a brand. My goal for this video is for it to be the last video that you have to watch in regards to product research, because I truly believe that this is one of the biggest reasons why people don't start their online businesses. They get stuck in this process and never end up launching anything. And truth be told, there's no secret to finding winning products. And the methods that I'm going to show you today are really the most effective effective things that I've come to know in my entire e-commerce journey. So without further ado, let's begin. Now I've prepared a little presentation here for you to make this process really smooth and seamless. And as you can see, I do have my Instagram tagged in the bottom left corner there, just in case you want to follow me on IG. But what we're going to be covering in this video is the winning product criteria that you need to be following in order to have more successful product launches. Also, we're going to be covering how to actually find winning products in the most effective and simplest way possible. Possible. And lastly, as I mentioned, I'm going to be covering how to actually build a brand with the products that you're testing and advertising because building a brand is very important. Similar to buying a house, building a brand is an asset that only gains value as it grows. And now more than ever before, there is investors and just big companies trying to buy smaller e-commerce brands. And we've seen so many examples of brands getting acquired for hundreds of millions of dollars that started their online stores just like you and I. So of course, the first thing that we need to talk about is simply what the winning product criteria is. If you've never actually had a successful product that you've advertised on Facebook or Google or wherever, then it's probably going to be tough for you to figure out sort of what a winning product looks like. So I've prepared here a sort of small checklist or criteria that you can use every time you look at a potential product. Now I will warn you after watching this video, it'll probably change your perspective on commerce in general. After getting into e-commerce now, every time I go to any store, I have this sort of criteria in mind. It's kind of a habit that you'll probably develop too. But with that being said, the first criteria that you, your product needs to meet is for it to be unique. Now uniqueness can be defined in many different ways, but the first way that I have listed here, which is actually one of the best things that you can have for a winning product is for the product to be new to the market. Now, of course, this is just criteria that I've prepared for you to find the most success with products, but that doesn't mean that other products can't work. There are of course many people who sell very generic products and find success that way. But if you want to have the highest likelihood of success and to be able to build a brand, you need to find something that's relatively new to the market. Another way for your product to be unique is for it to be fun or quirky. Now there's many examples of this, such as, you know, customizable socks with your dog's face on them. We've all seen these sorts of products. You know, these don't necessarily solve any problems, but they're really funny and, you know, they're very shareable. So those are also really unique products that could be potential winners. And then of course, the last thing, and when it when it comes to uniqueness is for your product to not be easily found in stores. I recently made a video about a multi-million dollar sock brand and I used the example that, you know, it's really difficult to actually build a brand around that niche because socks are so easily found and I do stand by that statement. I believe that, you know, the more easily your product is found in stores, the harder it is for you to be able to sell it online and advertise it online. And of course, as Facebook ads continue to rise in cost, that's not going to make it any easier. So that's always something to keep in mind. Make sure that your products are unique and that they cannot be found in stores. Now, the next set of criteria is for your product to be high in demand. Now, there's many ways for you to figure out how high the demand for your product is, but the main way to approach this is to see if your product solves any particular problem. And the bigger the problem is, the higher the demand for your product is gonna be. I think Elon Musk has a quote in regards to this, not winning products, but in regards to solving problems. He said something like, you get paid in proportion to the magnitude of the problems that you solve something along those lines he's basically saying the bigger the problem that you're solving the bigger you're gonna get paid and this definitely translates into winning products I mean you could say the Tesla electric car is a winning product because it solves a huge massive problem start thinking of winning products not just as generic infomercial products you know that you see really late at night and that you only see on general stores if you're familiar with drop shipping you can think bigger and think sort of outside of the box and maybe start thinking of problems that people may have and start your research there as opposed to just browsing products now another way to figure out high demand is whether or not your product has a passionate audience behind it so for example with the brand i'm building right now we're actually in the fashion space which is a space that i really love 
love. As you can see, I love design and fashion is one of those things. And while our products do solve an ethical problem, they don't necessarily solve a problem such as like acne cream would, for example. But the fashion niche is very passionate and we're able to tap into those feelings to build a massive community. So that's a great way to determine demand. And the last way I have here is for it to be a big trend. For example, earlier this year with the virus, it was easy to spot the trend, right? Masks were a big thing and they still continue to be a big thing. So that is a big trend and you know that there's gonna be a lot of demand behind it. And the last winning product criteria that I wanna leave you with is real value. Now, I hear so many people talking about high perceived value as a criteria and of course I would agree that high perceived value definitely helps with having higher margins, but I urge you to look for real value as opposed to just perceived value. And the reason I say that is because I want you all to build tangible brands that actually provide value for the world. I don't believe it's ethical to mark up a price just so that you can fit in your marketing costs if the product doesn't actually have any value. That's not how you build a respectable brand with happy customers, and it's not sustainable by any means. If you're not looking for real value, chances are your product is just gonna end up in the garbage, polluting the world and not helping anyone. And obviously I'm not the police here. I, I can't really tell you what to do, but I urge you to try to do things ethically because you know we all gotta do our part. And trust me, it feels much better to run a real value business as opposed to fake value. The last thing I wanna say on real value is that if you're the type of person who doesn't really care about these things and you're willing to run a business unethically, then you shouldn't get mad at fake gurus that scam people because at the end of the day, you're not much better than them. <laughs> you're kinda of doing the same thing except you're hiding behind your screen as opposed to them showing their face. So yeah, I'm not trying to come at any of you. Obviously, I love all you guys and I love the community that we built here, but I just really wanna set a high standard. And of course, I want to lead by example and show you good principles of business as opposed to just sketchy business. But I digress, let's continue here. Now, how to find winners. This is where we're gonna get pretty interesting. I actually wanna show you a really amazing product research method that I only found in the last you know, five or six months and I don't hear many people talking about it. But first, I wanna let you know that the biggest industry secret when it comes to finding winning products or even just succeeding online is that there is no secret. And I know that might be tough to hear for a lot of you because most people are looking for shortcuts, but unfortunately there is no secret. Finding products is actually pretty easy. There's products everywhere, right? And as I just mentioned, even when you go to the store, I'm sure you can get a lot of product ideas. The hard part is actually choosing which product to pursue because there are so many available products that it's really hard to just stick to one. And that's where the winning product criteria will hopefully help you determine which product is the right product to pursue. Now, the simplest way, honestly, to find winning products it's just to go on AliExpress and use the free dropshipping center that AliExpress provides. I've actually covered this in a recent video that I will link in the description in case you wanna check it out. But briefly, I do wanna show you how this works. So you basically just go on your AliExpress account and then there is a section titled dropshipping center. This is free to use, so you don't have to pay to, to use this at all. And what you can do is look at products right here that are trending on AliExpress. So something like this, for example, has a ton of orders and it has a great rating, so it has real value and has a lot of demand, as you can see by the orders. Now, of course, the more orders that something has, the less new it is to the market. So it is a possibility that you're actually selling something sort of at the end of its trend. Every product has a cycle and you typically want to get in the cycle when it's beginning. So somewhere between zero and a thousand orders as a opposed to something that has like 7,000 orders. But that's basically the simplest way to find products. Now, the most effective way, in my opinion, however, is Facebook search. So basically by finding successful Facebook ads out there. Now, the thing about this is that most people who are advertising a product on Facebook and is getting a lot of views, they're paying a lot of money to advertise that product. <laughs> and Common Sense will tell you that if somebody is paying money to advertise something, chances are they're making some sort of money back. So this is why I believe this is a great way to find winning products. Now, this is also how I find winning ads to review for you guys here. And you guys have been asking me for a long time to make a video in regards to this, and maybe I will make a separate video about this. But quickly, I wanna show you a tool that I actually use, and the tool is called Drop Point. Now, this is a paid tool, but luckily it's only like $5 a month, so it's extremely affordable, and it's pretty great because what you can do is actually find products like this that has you know 700 shares 
380,000 views, you know that this product is doing well for somebody. So this is a great way to find products that are up and coming and that are not necessarily super saturated, that are still relatively new to the market. And it's great because you can see what the competition is doing in real time and see what you can do to improve and add value for your customers. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, that's what a brand does. A brand adds value to their customers' lives. If you're doing things worse than your competition, you're not gonna beat them and you're gonna be wasting your money when it comes to advertising, which nobody wants to do. Now, I would recommend that you put the max shares here somewhere around 500 and a thousand. So let's just say a minimum of 300 and a maximum of a thousand shares. And here it'll show us a lot of products that, that are proven to be selling, but are still not extremely saturated like a lot of other products might be. Now, as I mentioned, that's in my opinion, the most effective way to find winning products. This is actually how I found the products that sort of gave me the idea for the brand that I'm building right now. And I think most people would agree. I'm really curious if you've had a winning product before, let me know how you actually found it. I'm pretty sure that this is how most people find success with finding winning products. So I'm really curious to see what you think. So let me know in the comments. I read everything and I would love to see what you think. Now, lastly, what I want to talk about is actually building a brand with these products, because as I just mentioned, I don't find it to be super sustainable to just ship stuff from AliExpress because really what you're doing is profiting off of people's negligence of the existence of AliExpress as they could easily just shop for that product on AliExpress. So in order to work around that, you need to be putting yourself in a brand building mentality. Now building a brand around a winning product really works best with products that are new to the market or that have a big passion niche behind them, as I mentioned in the product research criteria, and this is why I use this as criteria for winning products because really if you're trying to build a brand around a product that's been sold by hundreds and thousands of other drop shippers, chances are it's probably at the end of its cycle and it's not gonna be worth to pursue. You actually might end up losing a lot of money investing in stock and branding it. So make sure that you find something that is ideally new to the market and that is not being drop shipped by other people so that you can actually build authority around them. So by branding and building authority around your product, you're actually gonna be able to beat Amazon and eBay. So I get that question a lot is, Ari, why would people shop on my store if my product is easily found on Amazon or eBay? Well, this is why. If you actually build authority around your product and you build a brand behind it, people will wanna shop in your store as opposed to Amazon because of the experience and the community that you're building. And we really can't keep ignoring Amazon as they keep exponentially growing. I mean, I'm a shareholder on, in Amazon. I truly believe that they're gonna continue to be like the biggest company this world has ever seen. So I don't think it's smart to continue to ignore them. You have to think of ways to actually beat them. They're part of the competition as well. And they're probably the biggest competition that you have. So make sure that you're building authority around your product. And of of course, that also means stepping away from AliExpress and shipping your products with sourcing agents. I've actually made a video on this in the past, so I will link that in the description, but let me know if you want me to make another detailed video on how sourcing agents work and how you can actually work with them. I also do provide multiple sourcing agents that I've worked with in the past to my Netsphere community members. If you don't know what Netsphere is, it's actually my paid course in community. It's only $29 a month, so that's less than a dollar a day, and you get access to not only all the content that I've made for it, but also the resources, as I've just stated, and access to our private community in which I actually do live Q and A's every week where we basically just chat with the community and solve community problems in real time. It's actually really cool and really fun. So if you're interested in joining, make sure you check out the link in the description. I would love to have you be a part of the community, but really the best way for you to be able to build a brand is to study brand designs, study other brands, and most importantly, to focus on your customer's happiness and on building a community. This is what building a brand is all about, building a community of passionate people that just absolutely love your brand and share it with their family and friends. This is how great brands are built. So make sure that you're not ignoring your customers ever. If it wasn't for them, your store wouldn't make any money. So it's really important for you to actually take care of them if you're trying to build a brand in general, but especially if you're trying to build a long-term brand. I do wanna make a more detailed video on building a brand, so let me know in the description again if you want me to make something like that. 
that I would be glad to do it. But that basically wraps up this video. I know I got kind of long, but I try to make it as simple and easy to understand as possible. That's sort of my philosophy when it comes to learning. I think if it's not fun and it's not easy to digest, it's ineffective. So I hope I earned your thumbs up on this video today. That always helps the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I do post a lot on there. And lastly, make sure you share your thoughts below. I literally read every single comments that you guys leave me, so, so I really appreciate your input. But with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.